Okay, we are live today. So we're live here at our normal Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern client interview. So every week, week after week after week, pretty much 52 weeks a year, I think we do take one or two weeks off around Christmas. We interview a client in a completely different industry and we break down what they've learned from the NEPQ sales process as one of our clients. All right, now this week, we're gonna interview this gentleman here, Robert Chen, who we're gonna talk about a story and we're gonna have him, I even asked him to th throw out some golden nuggets, some different questions, some different tonality that we've trained him uh, in being in one of our advanced, actually you were in advanced NEPQ 3.0, right? Correct. Okay, perfect. So now if you're brand new, so we're going live here on StreamYard. So we're going live here on StreamYard on our Facebook group, Sales Revolution. I think we have about 52,000 of you in there running around. We're going live here as well in our Facebook business page. I believe there's about 90,000 of you on there. My Facebook, LinkedIn, hello LinkedIn, Michael Sarka, Comcast manager. Yeah, I think I just did a, a somewhat of a keynote for you guys. I got cut off at an hour, I was supposed to have an hour and 15 minutes, but I still love you, Comcast. Nothing I can do for you, Michael. I tried, tried to give you guys more. We've got YouTube as we're going live here on YouTube. But what's up, Kendra, as well? Now, if you're brand new to those platforms and you're like, who is this guy in the blue Hugo Boss shirt? My name is Jeremy Miner. I'm the founder of Seventh Level. Now, if you have been living under a stone somewhere, we are a sales training company that trains people exactly like you watching me and Robert here right now. Okay, so we train. Mike, Michael, yes, sir. Appreciate it. So we train salespeople like you. We train sales professionals like you. We train sales managers, management leadership like you. We train executives like you. We train business owners, entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants, and we train you and your teams um, really how to transform the way you sell by learning specific skilled questions and techniques. Robert and I are going to talk about some of those that actually work with human behavior. What does it mean to work with human behavior rather than use techniques that work against it that trigger sales resistance, okay, that causes your prospects to keep their guard up, surface level? Robert and I, were gonna break down some of that for you. Now, we of course have to teach you the right tonality, okay, because there's certain questions, as, as Robert has learned and is probably still learning from us, there's certain questions in your sales process that have to be asked with more of a curious tone. Like, can you walk me through what you guys are? That's a curious tone. Now there's other questions in your sales process that has to be asked in more of a challenging or skeptical tone. And there, you're not going to do that in the beginning of the conversation, right? There's other parts. Then there's other parts of that sales conversation that you have to ask in more of, let's say a concern tone, a tone that shows empathy. So how do you know which tone to use in the different parts of your sales process, okay? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. We're gonna to give you a little bit of notes. Now, if you're on the live right now, here's what I'm gonna have you do. There's about 60 of you so far on the platforms on here between the four different groups. If you're on the live right now, I want you to go down and I'm gonna have you post hashtag live. So if you're on the live right now, go grab your phone. Okay, so go grab your phone right here and I'm gonna have you post hashtag live. So if you're on the phone, I better see a, a lot of hashtag lives or I'm just gonna go out and golf. I'm here in Scottsdale at the offices. It's like 65 degrees today. So I go golf out here. Robertson, Vegas is probably pretty nice up there. So I want you to go post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, go post hashtag replay. Uh, there it comes, thank you, Kendra, Kalina, all you guys, Zach, all right? So go post hashtag live, hashtag replay. And then what I'm gonna have each of you do is grab your phone and I'm gonna have you smash. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mia, Cecilia, Vincent, Gerardo, a lot of you. There's a couple of Facebook users. I can't see your name there. Justin, thank you. Go. Uh, so I'm gonna have you go smash the heart button and I'm gonna have you go smash the like button. Now I better see hundreds of smashed hearts because it was Valentine's Day yesterday and hundreds of smash likes or I'm just not gonna have Robert give you some of the some of the golden nuggets, some of the little nibbles you guys like to little nibble on, all right? All right, Robert, nobody cares about me. Unfortunately, they only care about themselves. All right, so walk us through, Robert. The first question I always have to ask anybody, 
just be real with me. Were you born out of your mother's womb with advanced questioning skills? Not at all. <laughs> okay, good. Were you born out of your mother's womb with advanced tonality skills? No way. No. In fact, were you born out of your mother's womb with advanced objection handling and objection prevention skills? Nope. Okay, so you're suggesting to everybody on here that you had to acquire those skills. You had to learn those skills. Absolutely. Ah, so sales is not something we're born with. It's something we have to acquire if we want to be like Robert and be a top 1% earning salesperson in your individual industries you guys are all in. I just had to clear that up. Now, Robert, what industry are you in? What do you sell? I'm in timeshare industry. You're in the timeshare industry. You know, a lot of times, because we train a lot of people in your industry. I mean, we train 158 industries. Yours is one of them. Okay. According to Forbes, guess how many industries there are? Only 158. I quite well, I read it, I read an article on that about three or four months ago. And I'm like, I thought there was like 10,000 industries. 158 industries. There's subsets of each of those, but we're in all of those. Only 158. Okay. Timeshares is obviously a big industry. And I think a lot of times when salespeople say, I'm in timeshare sales or I'm in car sales, they're like, you know, like just like, you know, the dreaded timeshare or dreaded car sales person mentality. And it's typically because of that mantra that most people have experienced because of the way, you know, people in the timeshare car industry, really most industries have been taught how to sell, right? That kind of hardcore you know, manipulate them um, type of, of hard clo closing techniques that nobody really likes because they wouldn't want them used on themselves. So how long ago did you get in sales? When did you start? Well, in the timeshare industry, um, it's been about four years for me. Okay. So you got into four industries and timeshares was new for you, right? Correct. Okay. Um, when you got into to time the timeshare industry, um, walk me through it. Like if I am a new rep, coming to work for your company tomorrow, what would my sales training look like? Well, they take you through a boot camp, which is roughly about two weeks. And what do you learn in the boot camp? Um, the process that we have like a yellow brick road they go over with you. It's about okay. 13 steps. Okay, so 13 step process, okay. And then what happens next? Then from there, uh, they go out there and put you on the floor and they want you to take about 30 days worth of tours. Okay. And, um, from there, you kind of separate yourself and get more training afterwards. Okay, so if you survive, mm. <laughs> um, then you get trained after the 30 days. Is that what you're saying? Uh, for the most part, yes. Okay, so they give you a little bit. They're like, hey, if they stick around, we'll then train them how to sell. Now, you got you obviously were able to stick around. What did they train you after that? Um, you know, they tell you basic stuff as far as you know the proper <laughs> questions, how to listen properly. Okay. Um, but yeah, just basic things like that. Okay, so this is just some basic questions. So you took the basic questions, and from what I understand, it wasn't like you did horrible. You you were making what eight nine thousand a month, something like that. That's correct. Yes. Okay, so you're making low six figures. So a lot of people would say, like, man, I'm making one hundred and ten thousand a year, one hundred and twenty thousand a year. I know everything there is to know about selling. I don't need no sales training. I know everything. What caused you not to have an ego like that where you're like, man, I, I, yeah, I'm I, missing something here. Like I, I need to learn more advanced skills. I want to make more money. What caused that? Well, at the end of the day, I just, I had a growth mentality. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be better than where I was. Yeah. I wasn't necessarily focused on competing with anybody else, but it was more about uh, achieving the best, being the best I could possibly be. And yeah, it kept me grounded. Mm -hmm. And from my understanding, because I, we were talking about this right before we went live, um, you started in our advanced NEPQ 3.0 training, right? Correct, yes. So, so that's where you have access to the, the virtual training platform. I think there's 34 hours of training content in there. We're about to add 15 in there that nobody's even seen yet. I just, in fact, I took three days. Actually, Monday was the third day. Tomorrow's the last day. I'm adding 15 more hours of content nobody's even seen. It's like magical stuff that I just held back. It's almost like NEPQ 4.0 version. I purposely hold back some stuff because I have to add it later on. We always add stuff to our training portal every single year, always update it, always take things out, add new things in. So you went through the portal and then you had part of our NEPQ Advanced 3.0 is you have access to our sales trainers and group trainings for about 90 days as well. 
So from the, the training you got from our advanced sales trainers in the group trainings, plus the virtual training platform, you got in there, what started happening? Maybe the first couple of weeks, couple of months, once you started learning. Well, I dive, I dove right into it. I uh, took it really seriously. Probably a smart thing to do is to take it seriously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> First two weeks, um, I just simply used some basic questions mm -hmm. uh, when it came down to my situation questions and and also uh, applying several other ones based on the program. And yeah. I ended up in my first two weeks of being a part of the program. I closed my biggest deal of my career, even to this day. I mean, what was the biggest deal of your career? Uh, $188,000. Uh, in 45 minutes. So. Okay. So you make a little bit of money off that. Just a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Okay, good. Now, from what I understand, um, you went from about eight grand a month to now 25 ish, 27 ish or something like that. That's okay. Great. So you, you've about tripled your income. Um, is it better to make 300 to 350,000 a year than a hundred or what? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> what what is it? What is it? And we're going to get into some specific training in a second. I'm just I want to hear the story myself more than anybody else. What is it um, allowed you to do the extra, you know, two hundred some thousand more a year than you were making before? What has that allowed you to do that you couldn't do even a year ago? Well, it's allowed me. First thing is it took me from an apartment uh, with my small family, mm -hmm. and we bought our first home together. That okay. was definitely a gift. Good. Um, so that was a big one. And then you know, a couple other things, but it allowed us to be able to go in a little relax a little bit and be able to do the things we wanted to do. Okay. So you got some money to invest now. You can breathe a little bit easier. See, money doesn't give it, any of us happiness. It just gives us more options. Mm -hmm. That's all money is. It just gives you more options. You can help more people. You can travel. You can, you know, have more options. Without money, you don't have many options, unfortunately. Okay. So let's... Um, so I want to go back to when you started using NEPQ compared to the way you used to sell. What was maybe one of the biggest things you started noticing from your prospects, even in that first 30 days, compared to how they used to treat you before? Well, uh, they started to engage more. Um, what do you mean by that? Well, their wall was down. It was very combative um, initially. It took okay. a while for that to even get to the point where we can even get into talking about what we're really there to do. Okay. Yeah. So before any PQ, you're saying that a lot of your your prospects they just had their wall up. Is that what you're saying? They had their wall up. Mm -hmm. And why now you kind of know this now. Before sometimes you don't know. You're like, oh, that prospect just had their wall up. But right. we don't understand it's because of what we're saying and what we're asking sometimes in our tone that triggers them to have their wall up. It's not their fault. They didn't just walk in that day and be like, you know what? When he asked me the second question, I'm going to trigger sales resistance and I'm going to go into fight or flight mode and say, well, how much is this going to cost? Or I'm going to try to get rid of them. Like they, they don't wake up that morning thinking they're going to do that. It's a triggered reaction from what the salesperson is saying to them. It's a triggered ask in our tone that we're using that's causing them to react that way. So what, um, what do you feel like the way you used to sell was causing that in your mind? You know, I, I know it's painful sometimes to go backwards, but absolutely. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, it, it was it was more about me than it was about them. Okay, I think that really if I can narrow it down. And when you say it was more about you, the old way you used to sell, like just maybe describe for us what you really mean by that. I was really focusing on making sure that I focus on my steps than anything else that was trained for me initially. Okay. As opposed to listening and making it more about them and what they wanted, what they needed. Mm. Okay, good. Um, let's give them a, a few examples, like specifics, because they all come here. They want the, you know, like give us some, give us some meat, give us some tactics. I mean, if they're clients, they already know all this, right? They know everything that you're about to sh share times like, Three billion, but that's a whole different story. And hey, I forgot to even ask you guys. Look, if you guys want to start acquiring the skill sets like Robert and like tens of thousands of our clients are acquiring right now or have acquired, you want to start making your first 10 grand a month in commissions in your industry, or let's say you want to start making your first 15 or 20 grand every single month in what you sell now. Or let's say you want to start making like Robert 30 grand a month in commissions, or even you know, Robert's still learning here, 40 grand or 15 grand or 50 grand a month with what you sell. Message me directly right now. 
So if you're on LinkedIn, the Facebook group, or my Facebook, or the business page, message me directly right now. If you're on YouTube, you can't message me on their platform. You'll have to join our Facebook group if you're wanting to message me. So message me directly right now, and we'll show you some different training options we have for your industry if you want to sell more like Robert and all these clients that you see. We have almost 13,000 testimonials now. Robert, I even saw one from you the other day. I saw two from you. You're two of the 13,000 testimonials. Well done. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about your connective questions. So, you know, early in the sales process, we learn what are called connective questions that take the focus off you and immediately put it on the prospect, which causes the prospect to let their guard down, right? Because if we start off with the same predictable questions, like, how are you doing today? How is your day going? Things like that. It's a lot of prospect, even though we might mean well, the prospect doesn't necessarily believe you really give a damn about how their day is going, right? Because every salesperson asks them that question has ever tried to sell them anything. So even though you might be genuine, they don't believe you are. And even little things like that causes them to emotionally shut down. Now, they might not say anything to you about it, but you're going to notice how their tone shifts and their body language shifts. And when you ask questions, they just give you vague, generalized answers because they've emotionally shut down. So what's a good connecti connective question, Robert, we trained you? We'll just give them one example because there's about three to four that you use for your industry. But what's one good one we've taught you how to ask, okay? Because there's about, you know, some after that, some before that, that causes a prospect to really let their guard down. Well, I, I simply ask them, says, oh, by Mary, uh, what's your expectation during our short time here together today? What yeah, so, so Mary, what, what are you, can I ask what, what you're hoping to, to get out of this tour just so I have more context or mm -hmm. what you, okay. You say expectations. We'd probably relate it. Can I ask Mary, what were you were hoping to get out of this tour today? Just so I have a better understanding. Okay. Because what that does, that's actually your last connective question you would ask for your industry. There's about three you'd ask before, especially a frame. But what that does, what does that do with Mary? Like when you ask that question, how does Mary typically respond to that? Well, they tell us how they got they got there and why they decided to be on tour to begin with, mm -hmm. um, and also what they're looking for, whether okay. it be more information or they got here on a promotion. And it okay. lets us so it know. starts to open them up. They're like, "Well, we're just seeing what you guys have and kind of what it would cost." So we don't want to skirt that underneath the rug. We're, we don't want to be like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah," but but first, before I, I've got to actually don't want to do that. And you don't want to give them the price because you haven't built any gap. So you give them a price. It's over because they don't see they, they they don't see that they have any problems right now it what you sell doesn't necessarily solve a problem but it does solve an emotional need mm. right that's what travel does uh, sometimes it solves problems but really it solves an emotion it's like buying a ferrari a five hundred thousand dollar vehicle doesn't solve a problem okay it's not like you need a five hundred thousand dollar car to drive from point a to point b you can go from point A to point B with a used Honda that's 12 years old, but it does solve an emotional need, right? Because maybe they're buying, and I'm just going off script here, they might be buying a Ferrari because maybe when they were a child, their dad said that they would never amount to anything. And now little Betty wants to show her parents that she's arrived and that she's successful. So it solves that emotional need. In fact, maybe they grew up poor. And now they want to show the people they graduated that they're really successful. And that car is that symbol for them. Or maybe they want to show their neighbors that they're very successful in business. And it's like a social status thing. Same thing a lot of times with traveling. It's a social status thing. Oh, we have our timeshare in Mexico or we do this. That's solving an emotional need, right? Everything that's ever been invented, any product, any service, anything ever that has been made solves a problem and or an emotional need. In fact, most products and services solve both. That's a whole nother training. Okay, so that's just one good connective question. There are other questions you have to ask before that. You can't just walk in, what are you hoping to get out of the call with us today? That's not gonna make any sense. There's questions that you have to ask before that to set that up. What's a good situation question? Okay, what's a good situation question that um, we've taught you how to ask? Because there's about probably about four or so in your space, but what's one of those four that you need to ask and what does it do with the prospect? Well, I talk about their, ask them about their past experiences, past vacations, past travel. Yeah. And why do you do that for your space? Why is that so important for you and them? It's an indicator of what their experiences were, but also what they're looking to get here today. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell me that question though, like role play with me. Like, how would you ask it? Let's look at your tone. Um, go, go Bob into that role play mode. Yeah. Bob and Mary, um, tell me a little bit more about, uh, what trips you've taken in the past and why you've taken those places, those trips. Mary, can you walk me through maybe some trips you've taken in the past and, and kind of why you went on those just so I have more context? Mm -hmm. So we kind of slow down the tone mm -hmm. and then typically how does the prospect respond? Cause that's probably one of your first situation questions you're asking. I'm assuming for what you sell, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Typically how does the prospect respond to that? They actually light up because it takes them back to those vacations. Yeah. See what we're doing there. So with what Robert is selling, it's a little bit different of a situation question here, but we're taking back in his industry to why they even want to, have something like why they even want to travel in the first place, right? What 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 does that look like in the past? Now, there's other situation questions you have to ask after that. That's not the only one, and then you jump and then they're closed. There's others, but that's kind of the first one you're asking for your space. Let's go into problem awareness questions. What's a good problem? Because there's many different problem awareness questions you have to ask for what you sell. Mm -hmm. Maybe give us an example of one, and how? Do, why is it so important that you ask that? Well, I asked some questions about uh, reasons why they haven't been able to travel as much as they have actually would like to in the past. So I'll just ask them, said, what kept you from going to Hawaii? You've been wanting to go for 10 years. Yeah. What has kept you from going to Hawaii? Okay. Now that's not going to be the first problem awareness question you'd mm -hmm. ask because that's kind of a, that's probably, you're probably asking a problem awareness question and they're telling you like, oh, I really want to go to Hawaii, but you know, we just haven't. And now you're basically clarifying and probing on why they haven't been able to go. And what would they do? Just give me an average response of what somebody would say. Um, not being able to get off life finances. Okay. And how does that help you by them saying that? How does that help you and them? From there and I get them to go ahead and verbalize the problem. What has kept them from going in the first place. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how does, so just for my knowledge, cause you know, we train people in your space, but, I don't know if I've, I might've written sales structures for your space. I'll have to look back there, but um, how does your solution solve that for them? Like if they, if they're still, if they can't get off to go travel, how does the timeshare solve that? The flexibility of traveling with points versus cash. Mm, okay. Interesting. That makes sense. Okay. So you're kind of, you're okay. So that question gets them to realize that when you go through your presentation and you bring that up, how you can solve that problem, that they don't have to, they don't have that same problem. Even though they still have to work, they have far more flexibility because of the points, not cash. Okay. That makes more sense. Okay. Um, what's a good, what's a good solution? There's other questions you could ask in problem awareness, but what's a good, well, let, let me do this. Let me throw you a curveball or change up. What's a good clarifying question that you ask that you've learned from us when they say something and you clarify the, off that answer to get them to maybe go below the surface more? Well, I typically would repeat um, the problems they mentioned to me. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you mentioned earlier that you said that your work and even finances have kept you from going. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that make you feel about, you know, not being able to go in and travel the way you've always wanted to? Yeah, that, that's more of a, I'd, I'd say that's more of a solution awareness question. I see what you're doing. But mm -hmm. what I would do is when they said, oh, we, you know, we can't go to this. And hold on, what's held you back from being able to go there? Okay, and how long has that been going on? Mm -hmm. So not being able to travel like that, has that has that had a impact on you guys? So that's more of a probing question, mm -hmm. right? And typically before that, you'd want to find out, okay, how long have you not been able to travel like that though? Because when they tell you for your industry how long they've had the problem, which your problem is they can't travel like they want, that's the problem for your industry that you solve, it not only tells you how long, they haven't been able to travel, but more importantly, who is that telling? Themselves. Yeah, they're telling themselves how long they've had the problem. Because what we all have to understand is that your prospect, 99% of the prospects that all of you are talking to in your respective industries, okay, 99% of them don't even know what their real problem is when you first start talking to them. Or maybe they know they have a problem, but they don't understand the depth of the problem or how bad that problem really is. So that type of question that Robert is talking about allows them to start seeing their real problems. Okay. And that starts building a gap from where they are compared to where they want to be that they never knew existed.
Okay, and there's a lot more into that. Consequence question. What's a good consequence question that we've taught you how to ask? Because there's a couple that you ask for industry. What's one good one? And how does a prospect typically react to that? Um, well, what if you don't do anything about not being able to travel the way you always wanted to? Um, what solutions do you have? What if it even gets worse? And how do they respond to that? Um, they usually say, well, either they'll respond to where, well, we just won't go or we're okay with that. Or at the end what of happens day, if you don't do anything about this and you, you can't travel to, you know, X location and Y location, like what happens then? See, there's, there's probably a better consequence question. I can help you come up with that. Just stop off the top of my head. But basically the consequence question gets them to, to basically see what the consequences are if they don't do anything about solving the problem. Now, typically for your average prospect, what is their main problem they have? It usually comes down to money. Okay. Ultimately. Mm -hmm. So it's so expensive to go out of these hotels and Airbnb. So what you're saying is the timeshare is way less expensive and gives them more flexibility. Yes. If you travel. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. then. Okay. Um, so it could be actually saving them money. That could be the problem. So could, that could almost be the consequence question as well. Something wrapped around that, just something to throw out there. We don't have time to go into your presentation and, and the process that we've taught you that, the three-step process. That's all in our virtual training stuff. What's a good, um, maybe, because there's other solution awareness questions you have to ask there too, not just that one and, and the consequence, but what's a good commitment question you ask to get them to commit to take the next step and really purchase what you're offering? Um, I ask them, do you feel that what you've seen here today can help you travel the way you've always wanted to? And how do they respond to that? Usually, yes. I mean, they, they see the value in it. It all comes down to whether they can afford it or not. Can I ask what aspects of what we've covered today do you feel are really going to help you travel where you want to go? Or something like that. I might tweak that a little bit. Or do you feel like this could be the answer for you? See, that's another shortened version of that. Okay. And when they're like, yeah, I really do. Hold on. Why do you feel like it is though? You're either going to get, yeah, I really do. Or yes, but... And then they're going to tell you their concern. That's another way to get out their concern. If you say, do you feel like this could be the answer for you? Now, we have that verbal pause there because what the verbal pause does is it causes their brain, their mind to think deeper about the question you're asking. That's what verbal pausing does. This is for everybody. I'm just sharing everybody with this, okay? Because... Um, because if you don't use a verbal pause, you're like, do you feel like this could be the answer for you? It's just a knee jerk, quick question that gives a knee jerk answer. But if I slow down and I lean in, do you feel like this could be the answer for you? Notice how my tone shifts down into more of a, a tone that shows empathy. Okay. All right. And what's your biggest objection you typically get? It's always money objections. Okay. And how do you help them overcome that? Um, you know, we, we show them exactly what they're doing and, 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 and what we can do for them as far as get them more value for the money they're spending. Because mm. the question you could use for your industry, you probably just haven't learned this because we teach this more in the advanced inner circle. It's like, well, you know, John, you you tell me which is more expensive. I mean, is it more expensive? Because if they give you that objection, is it more expensive for you to what would be something more expensive, like going to hotels, Airbnbs, the way they've been doing it? Right. You tell me, is it more expensive for you to keep spending money on the hotels and this and that? Or is, you know, is it more, you know, is it more expensive for you to get the funding together to get into the timeshare where you save that money and you have the flexibility? Or is it more expensive for you to do nothing at all? You keep spending money on all these hotels and you're forced to not be able to travel near as much or something like that. I probably tweak that a little bit. And then at the end you say, which is more expensive? Mm -hmm. So it's like a comparison model. Okay. We teach that. All right, Robert. Anything you would like to maybe give advice for let's a couple of different types of group. How, what advice would you give, first of all, for somebody that's newer, getting into sales, like uh, wants to sell more? What would you tell that person? I will tell you, don't hesitate. This is definitely a training looking back um, that was uh, the best decision I made for my career. Um, if you're looking to improve, you want to succeed in this space, uh, definitely. Uh, take advantage of the programs that are available through Jeremy and Seventh Level. I'm gonna tell you, there's some amazing things on here. A lot of people would say that for sure. <laughs> That's too <laughs> nice. Um, what about a vet? Let's say a vet like you that was already making low six figures. What advice would you give to that vet? You can always get better. 
You know, you don't know it all. And at the end of the day, when you think you know it all, you're, that's the time when you're getting ready to get out of the business. So yeah, I always look to get better. Yeah. That's what I always did. I mean, even when I was making 2.5 to, you know, 2.8, 2.9 million a year in commissions. So that was in four different industries in my 17 year career, two B2C, two B2B, almost $3 million a month in commissions. Guess what I was doing? Always learning more advanced skills. And I always found it very interesting that the salespeople in my company and industry that made like 80% less than me felt that they knew everything about selling and they're making 80% less than me. Mm -hmm. Nothing I can do for those people. So you always want to acquire more advanced skills unless you just want to stay stuck at the income you're at. Right. That would be the advice for sure. All right, Robert, it's a pleasure to have you on here. I do have to ask you one question. I always ask everybody this. Does your spouse, was she happy that you got into the training? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. She was. <laughs> okay. So you're suggesting that funding that you put into NEPQ.30 possibly gave you a very large return. Absolutely. It's still continuing to. Yes. Well, let's see. If it took you from a hundred grand a year to over 300,000 a year, that means you're making now 200,000 more per year. Yes. So over five years, that means you're going to make $1 million more than what you would have had you not got into training. Yeah. That's a little bit of cash for sure. Absolutely. Okay, Robert, well done. Now, if you guys are on here, you want to start learning more advanced training skills, we just give you a couple little nibbles here on these lives and all of our reels and stuff like that. You want to be like Robert and tens of thousands of our clients. Uh, many of them are in the same industry that you are in right now watching me and Robert talk. Okay. Uh, you want to start making your first 10 grand a month in commissions or your first 15 or even 20. Let's say you start want to start making 30 grand a month in commissions in your industry or 40 or even 50. Heck, we've got people, I can assure you, we have clients in your industry that you are watching me right now that are making two, three, five times what you are now, even if you're already making six figures or multiple six figures. So if you want to acquire those same skills that Robert is starting to talk about, message me directly right now. So if you're in the Facebook group or the my Facebook or the Facebook business page, message me directly right now. If you're on LinkedIn, message me directly right now. Now, if you can't figure out how to message me directly because you're just an old dude like me or you just don't know social media, then just post hashtag NEPQ, post hashtag NEPQ and either myself or one of my stunt doubles on our team will message you um, some options that we have if you want to sell more because at the end of the day, you don't have to acquire more advanced skills. You can just stay at the same income you're at. Now, obviously for Robert, it was better for him to make an extra 200,000 a year because sometimes an extra couple hundred grand a year kind of opens up more things in your life. Okay. All right. We'll be, what we, now we will, we're going to try to do a live tomorrow. I'm, I'm in the studio tomorrow, finishing up a product. We will try to do a live tomorrow. If not, we'll be back next week. If you're on YouTube, you'll have to join our Facebook group. If you want to message me directly, um, you'll need to go to, let's see, you can literally learn everything for free. If you aren't lazy, I, you know, I didn't learn everything for free. Whoever said that <laughs> I, I didn't learn everything for free. I was ranked number 45 in the entire world out of any industry by the Direct Selling Association out of over 108 million salespeople selling anything. Made almost $3 million a year. I didn't learn any of that, hardly any of that for free. So that doesn't make any sense. I don't know who put that there, but I, I don't know if, if most very successful people would probably agree with that. Okay, well done. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Love you guys, Robert. Thanks so much for being on here. Talk to you guys. Oh, just saying you could, I'll be a lot faster. Yeah, it'd be like a hundred times faster because I guarantee I wouldn't be here training you had I tried to learn everything for free. I can assure you I would have never got even a tenth of what I made in my sales career. So well done on rebounding, rebounding there. You rebounded there. I got you, whoever that is, Facebook. user. I'm just giving you a hard time. Don't be, well, we're not going to be mad at you. I can't see who your name is. It just says Facebook user, but we love you too. I got to go. I got to get on our podcast. Robert, take care. We love all you guys. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Robert. Hey guys, if you enjoy these, here's another you can watch right over here, right over here. Join our free sales revolution group. Click the link below, join us, and we're going to help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.